Hi everyone, welcome back for another whiskey review. Today I'm looking at this um, something a bit special. Um, just a bit of a backstory before I get into it. This is Arde Kalpi, if you haven't already eyed it. And um, this bottle came into my possession actually a very long time ago. At some point in 2019, I was having a great night drinking whiskeys and just talking about amazing drams with my good friend Trevor Johnson and um, the Irishman. Uh, he has his own whiskey review channel as well. I will um, put a link to it. Really, really good reviews. And um, I don't know what triggered it, but um, I might have given him a bottle or a sample or something. And as the night was unwinding, he said, mate, you take this. And for those of you who know how precious and how rare I'd be, Calpi in particular is it's I was like are you sure because there's quite a bit in there um, good 100 mils or maybe even more and he said look I've enjoyed it I don't know how he came into position of it or um, how long he had the bottle for and um, he said look I'm not really a big fan of PT smoky whiskies maybe you will like it because you like your real PT smoky whiskies and I said don't have to ask me again and such is life sometimes because I would like to think I'm really blessed in terms of absolutely endless supply of quality drams. Maybe because of the work I do with whiskey, but also amazing whiskey community of friends who we all look after each other. And um, this particular bottle ended up being in the back of the shelves in my old house and completely forgotten about. I didn't even try it, let alone do a review. And... Um, during the move, during um, in the last 10, 12 days, this beast turned up and I was like, wow, how could I forget about it? Because I remember being so excited and so um, ecstatic, you know, and finally being able to do a proper review, let alone have a decent amount to talk about. And um, it's a bit of a shame, but as they say, um, when the timing is right and... The mood hit and tonight I feel like a really peaty smoky whiskey. So the Ardbeg Kalpi, this is part of the era annual release, you know, which they call it. Um, they've been doing it for a while and this was their 2017 release from memory, the Kalpi. And every year do, they do something crazy and really, really out there. And um, with this one, um, their main person in charge at Ardbeg. Dr. Bill Lumsden sourced some oak barrels made out of oak from the Black Sea in Russia. And um, some of the whiskey was aged in barrels that were made out of oak from there in the Black Sea in Russia. And some from your normal ex-bourbon cask. And then it was all sort of married together to put this release out. I have long admired Ardbeg's... Um, unique propositions and total just out of the block creations you know and um i've been to our bed once that was march 2018 and actually when i visited they were um presenting to the market their 2018 release which was the art bag grooves which if for those of you who might try it or heard about it they were cutting some grooves into the barrels to expose some more oak fresh oak you could say to get some different flavors out of the whiskey and I admire that because they are a very big distillery and um, to do something like this must take a bit of commitment and you know finding different barrels and um, doing something a bit different now um, the term Kalpi I think it's some sort of mythical character um, I haven't really researched it a lot but it's some sort of mythical character which well, the name's quite sexy. I really, really like it. Well, um, let's find out what's it like on the nose first. So this one is the 46% 46, 46 release. And again, those of you who might know Ardbeg really well, they do a committee release, which seems to be cast strength or a slightly higher ABV. I remember this because um, when I did go to Ardbeg Distillery, the grooves that I picked up, I think it was two bottles, was at the higher ABV. And when I came back to New Zealand, the general public release stock came here. 
was at 46 percent so this seems like it's the general release which is available worldwide but at 46 percent i still like it you know non-chill filtered and um all of the goodness that comes with it i still can't believe i let <laughs> i took so long to review it but um it was meant to be and tonight's the night so to your good health my friend trevor thank you for allowing me to try this interesting dram very light in color you know being in a virgin oak cask from the black sea or the russian area and ex bourbon cask so very very light in color Ooh. there's a maritime seaside character straight away on the nose hmm very oily on the nose actually now um i would say there's no way to know what age it is and again i didn't really try to research too much i respect the fact they put it out as a non-age statement whiskey um but if i had to guess i would assume it's around the 10 years old or maybe even older very interesting the gentle peat coming through still getting that lot of sort of salty seaside character up front and that classic art big smoke part medicinal character um not as medicinal as lefroig maybe but it's there you know and if you're not fan of the peaty smoky whiskey it's something that might annoy you but in my case i oh, really really good not a challenging nose by any imagination there's just a little hint of honey just the slightest hint of honey maybe some cured meat you know sort of character and there's just the underlying sweetness which is trying to come forward but that maritime character that smoked meats character is subduing the sweetness no go away <laughs> we gotta dominate which i'm enjoying wow really really nice oh. again like i said before so oily and punchy on the nose it's a bit of a beast all right, time to find out what's it like on the palate. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. That um, maritime character has carried on to the palate. Really briny or salty character. Followed by a bit of dark chocolate. Very dry. It's like sweetness. You can go. <laughs> You're not required. The peat and smoke is all over the palate. Again, not overpowering, but in good amounts, that peat and smoke. Really, really good. Mmm. Just a bit of sweetness coming through. Very tiny amount. Overall, still very dry. I mean, if you like your peaty, smoky whiskey, this is the holy grail. You know, the Ardbeg's, the Laphroaig, the Port Charlotte Brooklady's, you know. Wow. One thing I'll admit to is, and I say that quite often, for being a whiskey connoisseur and being a fan of peaty, smoky whiskeys, I haven't really drunk a heck a lot of um art bags and somehow it just slips my mind you know i mean i've tried all of their classic range ugadal anola the 10 year old i've tried a couple of independent bottles as well i'm pretty sure at whiskey bars and um another non eight statement one i remember which is at cast strength there's ugadal and there's another one and i remember the ugadal being very good because it had i was allowing a little bit of the sweetness to come where this one is suppressing it, it's no problem at all. I enjoy it. Mm. Wow, 
Wow, that dark chocolate's on the palate. Wow. Really, really nice. I mean, for me, right now, it would have been picture perfect if I could find just a little bit of that sherry raisin sweetness. But I guess that's what, that's not what this release is about. It's about bringing that solid peat smoke bomb, very dry, and allowing just a little bit of sweetness. Very, very satisfying. Itchy, kind of craving smoked fish. And guess what? Uh, <laughs> Straight after this, I'm going to have some smoked marlin. Actually, I might just do that. This is going to turn into a food pairing. Whiskey and food pairing um, session. Because um, I just happen to have some smoked marlin available right now for dinner time. Let's see how the two go together. Now, um, this part is not staged at all. Um, right now, it's about 9.30 at night uh, in New Zealand. And I kind of thought I'll record this review because it got a bit of a late night. I worked late and um, I was going to have my dinner after this recording this review. So it's a bit of freak of nature that my mate Tim um, gifted me some smoked marlin. And it'd be good to have a wee bit of it with the cowpea. Why not? was meant to be Trevor maybe I kept the bottle because well, I didn't have marlin till now to pair it with and for those of you who have never had marlin the fish to eat very chewy mm. oh. heaven <laughs> Here's a top tip. Get some smoked marlin to go with your <laughs> art bag kelpie. Oh, gorgeous. Gorgeous. Really, really good. That is a top class pairing. Um, which has given me a thought. Maybe I should do this more often. Pair some food with the whiskey. See if the flavors resonate. Well, that's all I've got to say about this particular whiskey. Um, I did a bit of search. I haven't seen it for sale. Obviously, we are in 2021 now, and I would imagine these would be long gone and probably into private collection. You might see one pop up on auction site every now and then, but they're going for outrageous money, $400, $500. I've seen one for up to 600 Kiwi dollars, which is about 300 pounds. I would only guess... But I think when originally released, it might have been around 50 pounds or the 75 pounds, 150 Kiwi dollars. So it is a bit of a treasure and it's well worth it. So, well, if you enjoyed the review, please like, share and subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you in the very near future with another review. See you later. Bye-bye.